Um, my name is uh, Prince Philip Karadjordjevic from Serbia. How's everyone doing today? Good. So welcome to uh, Surfing Bitcoin. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to talk to you about why I'm bullish on Bitcoin. So firstly, is there anyone here who doesn't own Bitcoin? Okay, this should be easy. I'll be preaching to the choir then. <laughs> So a little bit of my, my, about my life experience and why, how I got into Bitcoin. I first discovered it in, well, as most, of you, most people know that you discover Bitcoins a few times. First time I came across it, well, I believe it was in 2012 when someone said to me, oh look, look at Bitcoin, it could be going to $100. Didn't take much notice. I thought, yeah, whatever, it looks like some magic internet money. Then I forgot about it. Then in 2016, I saw it on social media that it was rising. Wasn't taking much notice until 2017, my, one of my best friends said, uh, Philip, look at Bitcoin, it's rising. You can make a lot of money there. Plus it has this great thing where it's only got 20, it will only print, um, they, they only have a, they have a supply of 21 million. So it, it actually solves the, uh, the inflation problem that we have. I was like, fantastic, buy some, you'll make money. Okay, so I got in because of the mon numbers go up. But then I got into uh, other shit coins as well as most Bitcoiners do in the beginning. Um, then the, during the bear market, 2018, 2019, I was still stacking when I had a paycheck here and there, and it was, uh, you know, still believed in it, but still not 100% about it. Until I think it was about the beginning of the uh, of the of 2020 when the whole uh, plan, I mean, pandemic happened. Um, <laughs> that I started studying more, and that's it. When you start putting more hours and in studying into Bitcoin you realize that actually you have probably the solution to most, if not all, of the world's problems in your hands, in your, in your brain, actually. So it's, that was a bit of a revelation. So I, it was when I joined Bitcoin Twitter, people with uh, the, the, the Bitcoin maxis and all the plebs were actually speaking a lot of sense, you know, listening to people like Michael Saylor, reading Gigi's article, then I bought um, uh, Safety's book on uh, the, the Bitcoin standard. And all these things were just great, great content, and it really convinced me. So I sold all my shit coins and went 100% of the Bitcoin. So right now, we are in a, apparently in a Bitcoin bear market. But since I learned that Bitcoin is all about uh, low time preferences, I look at the long time, uh, look, look at the long, uh, at a long time horizon. So as a Bitcoiner should do, I zoomed out, and I still think that we are in a bull market. <laughs> So I'm still very, very bullish. Um, you know, as humans, we do need to make a very long, uh, when, a very long uh, uh, time horizon when it comes to saving. And I believe that Bitcoin is the best savings technology and the only savings technology ever discovered. So I was, I've been, I'm currently working in the financial industry, believe it or not. I work in, as, as an asset manager. And when I first got into Bitcoin, like when I first bought Bitcoin in 2017, my, uh, some of my colleagues, my boss and people quite high up in the company sort of figured it out. And they're all questioning me and they're all telling me about the FUD, you know, it's too, it uses up too much energy, it's just going to crash, it's just in a tulip bubble and all that. And I was having fun speaking to them about that and I wasn't quite clued up back then. And they were like saying, oh, when I reach 10,000, oh, sell, sell, now is a good time to sell, Philip. And I was like, no, no, I'm not selling, I'm not selling. Now, things are different because in the last year, that, the company I work in now has a Bitcoin, I say it's a fund that tracks Bitcoin exposure, so equities that have Bitcoin exposure. And those people who were giving me some, some hard times are now actually working on that fund, tracking Bitcoins. So that sort of shut them up a little bit. And then also later, uh, earlier this year, we all, uh, we all uh, the company learned that, uh, uh, that ExxonMobil, one of the biggest oil drillers in the world, has decided to put, had decided to mine Bitcoin because it will help their ESG score. So that was another, you know, shut up moment. Um, so going back to the beginning of 2020, the money supply of the world has, has actually been increased about 30% since then. But Bitcoin has actually increased probably about maybe close to 400% since then. So people, when they argue that it's not an inflation hedge anymore, I think they need to look at the numbers again. And talking about money supply and 
the ridiculousness of it, really. This, the fact that there's a small group of people out there right now, in, for example, in Jackson Hole in America, the feds are meeting together and they decide the future of so many people around the world, not just in America, but around the world. And I just think it's ludicrous that a small group of people have a decision over so many people's livelihoods. So I'm bullish about Bitcoin because it solves sort of groupthink, it solves individuals having control all of, all, over all our lives. Another reason why I'm bullish about Bitcoin is people who are no coiners. I meet them every day and I try to convince a lot of people every day. Not all the time, but you know, as Bitcoiners it's our duty to, uh, to spread the word and to educate. And there's still so many of them out there. And the beautiful thing is most people, if not all people I meet, all have the knowledge that something is wrong with this world. And they don't really know what to, how, how, to, uh, how to describe it, how to put their finger on it. They don't know what's actually killing this world. So they think that money corrupts, but what they don't realize that is that money is corrupt. And there's a huge lack of, of education happening in public schools and any schools about the history of money. We're taught that, for example, all the world wars were fought because of ideological differences. But no one, nothing is taught in schools about what actually drove those wars and what funds those wars. And that's, of course, is central banking. So I'm bullish the fact that when we educate people and they understand that these wars, all this violence is caused by central banking, then they tend to, uh, they tend to want to buy bitcoins. So I'm very bullish about that. Also, talking about um, people's curiosity is also, humans are actually naturally quite curious. And we need to sort of keep that going because we have lost a lot of our critical thinking and that's tied in with a lot with curiosity. And I think, you know, they say that curiosity killed the cat, but I think curiosity will kill the banks. So I'm quite bullish about that. <laughs> Then what, I'm also, what else I'm very bullish about is uh, Bitcoin as freedom. So there are some landmark historical documents out there that were drawn up to protect individual freedoms. And what I'm getting at is that Bitcoin, sorry, this is going back to regulations, excuse me, I'll just re re rewind a little bit. Bitcoin shouldn't, when, when it comes to regulating Bitcoin, this is gonna cause a problem because I reckon eventually it will actually cause the word ownership to be tested, to be, to, be, um, to be questioned again. Because as you know, Bitcoin is just text, it's just maths, it's just information, and at the end of the day, is it ethically right, morally right to, uh, to regulate or even outlaw text, speech, maths, information? Of course not, and if the subject is put to test, if they do question it, then I believe that we can go down two very different paths, one of, of pure tyrannical control and the other one of more freedom. But I'm bullish because constitutionally we have two very good, very, very historic, um, serious historical documents. One of them is the US Constitution and another one is the Magna Carta, which are designed to protect our freedom. So I believe that if Bitcoin is ever put to the test about what it's the, of its essence, then those documents are there to protect us. So I'm bullish the fact that when, when, uh, when the Bitcoin actually gets tested, it will win. So freedom will win. So I'm bullish about freedom. Also, when it comes to, uh, glo um, to global mac um, to macroeconomics and, um, and the global problems that we have, I'm bullish about Bitcoin because it will win game theory. As everyone knows, probably people here know about prisoner's dilemma, the problem about the, the prisoner's dilemma case study and simple government arbitrage. So if they don't, if, sorry. So basically I think that if one government, so one state actually accumulates Bitcoin like El Salvador, they will, people, other, other countries will look at El Salvador as, as an example 
And right now, El Salvador, over the last over the last year and a half, sorry, over the last year since adopting Bitcoin, its GDP has grown by I think about seven percent annually, and that to me is very bullish. That's also through its increased tourism business and the fact that it's making its country much much more um, much less violent and more open to uh, to trade. So I'm bullish there. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is back to my work and what is what is uh, an asset management, what is the, the theory actually of the essence of portfolio management is for its uh, diversification. So for example, a pension fund they has to be diversified with certain amount of risky assets, certain amount of safe assets. There's talk about, you know, the, the rule of thumb is about 60% equities and 40% fixed income. Equities being more of the risky side of, of, um, of the assets and fixed income being uh, the more safe side of the assets. Well, I believe that the safe side, equi um, fixed income, the bond markets are not really safe anymore. As we've probably seen over the last few years, we have negative rates and ne negative yields on some of those bonds. So really, I think the bond market is almost broken. And with equities, yes, they have gone up seriously since the last financial crisis of 2008, but that's also been driven by a very low, the low interest, record low interest um, rate environment and by unprecedented amount of stimulus, especially since the, the COVID pandemic. So I'm bullish about Bitcoin because as I said before, it is safe, it's, it's the best savings technology ever created. And when it comes to portfolio management and portfolio diversification, people say it's, it's never a good idea to put all your eggs in one basket. Well, I believe that Bitcoin is not that basket, not those eggs. Bitcoin is the chicken that lays those eggs. <laughs> so while, what else am I bullish about Bitcoin? I believe that, well, the most valuable asset that we have in the, in the world is actually time. And as most of you Bitcoiners here are aware of, that Bitcoin is time. So yeah, let's do the maths. So that to me, I'm very bullish about. Then other things I'm bullish about. Do you think, do all pension funds hold Bitcoin? No, so I'm bullish. Is there a Bitcoin spot ETF yet? No, bullish. Do all billionaires own Bitcoin? No, bullish. Do all companies have Bitcoin on their reserves or balance sheets? No, so I'm bullish. Does Amazon accept Bitcoin yet? No, bullish. Do your neighbors own Bitcoin? No. Bullish. <laughs> is Bitcoin confiscatable? No. Bullish. Can you sanction it? No. Can you hack it? No. Can you destroy it? No. Can you stop it? No. Can you stop time? No. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. <laughs> Thanks. Any um, questions in the last, last five minutes? Uh, you, you mentioned your, your fund is um, now tracking Bitcoin uh, with the equity funds. Do you know if the equity funds? Yes. <laughs> Uh, your, your, um, your company is now, uh, they have a fund, an equity tracker fund for, mm -hmm. for Bitcoin. Do you know of any other funds that are in your field that are doing the same? I don't know the names of the actual companies, but yes, there's more of them coming up, which I guess I'm bullish against. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, they don't have direct exposure. They don't actually buy, they're, they're tracking companies that have exposure to Bitcoin. So, you know, you have your micro strategies in there and... Uh, some mining companies and things like that. So is that starting conversations now in the networks, uh, you know, in the city of London when everybody's out drinking? People's talk, to, yeah, people right. are talking about it, yeah. Interesting and bullish, thank you. Bullish. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, Laura. Yeah, it's uh, Yeah, what does bullish mean? Because <laughs> I, like, you said it this whole time, I have no idea what it means. <laughs> you read my mind. So there's, uh, in finance, there's, uh, there's, uh, you have the bulls and the bears. Bear mar a bear market is, uh, is when markets are down, so it's a bear. You can remember like a bear sort of mauls people, puts them to the ground. And the bull, bull markets, when things go up, bulls have horns, so things go up, basically. Okay, it's, now I get it. 
is this a once bitten podcast session now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some, uh, some insight into uh, the extent to which, um, thank you. The, do you have some insights into the extent to which other countries are contemplating um, adopting Bitcoin as a as a uh, as a legal tender? Yes. Yeah, so this is a problem I have with uh, some of these tweets recently. <laughs> I know. I think that most countries, if not all, will adopt Bitcoin at some given time. But I don't have any insights on any country. I, I was quoted about saying that uh, because Bitcoin is very, it's ideal money in Sharia law, that maybe an Arab country will, uh, will have it, will, uh, will adopt it quite soon. But insides, not yet. If I do, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share them with you. <laughs> Um, most um, institution or asset manager like you, I think you uh, classify Bitcoin and such crypto uh, in the very risky portfolio, in your portfolio. Do you see a trend or maybe um, a time frame where they will start to classify Bitcoin in a lower uh, risky good, class? Good. Yeah. Like you said in a few minutes, why not in the safe part? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, at the moment, Bitcoin is seen as a sort of high, high, beta, high beta growth stock, a bit like uh, tech stocks, a bit like the Nasdaq. So I think in time, that's part of its journey. And in time, uh, when, pe when we educate more, pe people have become more educated, it will, uh, I guess it will start to, it will start to, um, to, be, to behave more like a safe, safe haven asset. Uh, when you started, you mentioned that you were convinced that we are still in a bull market, so I would love to hear your reasons why you think that. Because it <laughs> depends what time horizon you're looking at, really. If you're looking at it since actually since the beginning of 2020, where Bitcoin is up some um, 350 or 300 some percent, you know, especially looking from when it reached its bottom of the uh, the black swan event of the, of, of the COVID, when it dropped middle of March, it was down to about $3,000. And what we're up about, we're uh, 21000 today, I think. So that's pretty bullish to me. And fi back five years, we're looking at maybe about four, plus 400%. And then back 10, 15 years, we're looking into thousands. So that's very bullish. We're only very bullish in the very short term. In the last six months, seven months, eight months, yeah, it's down 67%. But it's sale time, so it's time to buy. Thank you. Hello. Are you uh, also bullish on um, any other cryptocurrencies or um, anything else in the ecosystem? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bearish shitcoins. <laughs> and and um, if no, why? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I believe that Bitcoin is uh, Bitcoin is the only one. It's uh, it has an immaculate conception. There's no CEO, there's no team running Bitcoin, there's no snazzy marketing department, there's, uh, there's no, you know, it's, it's, it has, Bitcoin has a lot of energy securing it, Bitcoin is, Bitcoin is, um, the other companies, uh, sorry, Bitcoin is, is the first and the only to solve the problem and the others are, well, Look at Ethereum, they have a 70% pre-mine. Now they're looking to, uh, to get into proof of stake, which is an absolute joke. It's just an update of the, of, of the fiat system. Um, I think fiat will... Uh... <laughs> so I think that 99.9% uh, .9 of, uh, of cryptos, as people like to call them, will, uh, will, will, will tend to zero, whereas and money will tend to one, so Bitcoin will, will emerge as the only winner, logically. Yeah, we just have the time for one question more. Um, I'm very, very bullish Bitcoin as well, and I'm, I'm curious uh, to hear, since you work in the asset management field, do you think there is a uh, problem with the manipulation of the market at all, and the fact that it is kind of correlated to the Nasdaq? Is is that is in the future market? Is there is there a problem there in in the short term? 
In the short term, yes, but as we talked about, um, gentlemen over there spoke about it, is that, yeah, because it's acting like a, like a high beta growth stock, people will look at it like, like they, um, when they got their st stimulus checks and they got their money, that they would put them into these uh, performing, these, these, these short term performing stocks, like uh, these meme stocks and things like that. So it will be inflated disproportionately, and I think that will, that little bubble there will come back, but Bitcoin, the fundamentals are still strong, it's still there, and it's still, it's, it, it, I personally don't think it's a problem, it's an issue. And I think with time, other people, as I said, like education is key, that they will, uh, they will see that Bitcoin isn't, isn't a risky asset, isn't um, a meme stock, isn't fiat, so they'll, it will behave accordingly. But as I said, it's part of the journey of what we're experiencing right now, and we do live in a very strong fiat world, so. People like to make money. People like to make money. Thank you very much, Philip. So now we will go to the future perspective on the Bitcoin and crypto market. Thank, Thank you. you.